Yeah, the novel's a bit of a departure from anything I've ever done before. It was, it, I'd written a novel that had been extremely successful with both critics and the public for the first time, and that was Mystic River. And I felt, artistically, I felt like I was pigeonholed. It started to make me feel like this is what everybody was going to expect. And I think I'm, I'm contrarian by nature, or some people just call it Irish. So I said, um, I'm going to do something nobody ever sees coming. And I'm going to do something that's completely different than anything I ever did. And I always loved gothics. I always loved like the Bronte sisters and this great neo-gothicist now, uh, Patrick McGrath. And so I said, what if I told something on an isolated island with a storm bearing down on it and all the trappings of a gothic? And I, and I spun it with my own sort of interest in psychology. Um, and that's, that's how it happened. Shadow Island is not a real place, although it is based a little bit. There was a minimum security mental institution in the 1950s on a small island off the coast of Boston, but there was a bridge that connected to it, and that destroys my story. If there's a bridge, I have no story. If there's a cell phone, I have no story. I had to do it where all communication lines could be shut down, where these people were completely isolated, so that the investigating officer gradually believes he may never leave this island. And that doesn't work if there's a bridge. Martin Scorsese's, you know, probably our finest living director, and here he is directing one of my novels. That's, um, that's, that's a little boy's dream come true right there. I saw the film a few months ago. It was, uh, it's, it's a brilliant film. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's an absolute tour de force. Um, it rings you out, and, you know, it soaks you in its water and then rings you out and then it throws you to the side. It's an amazing, amazing piece of work. So I was um, absolutely blown away. I just had a child, and uh, my wife looked at me, and it's a kind of a disturbing film if you've just had a child. And my wife looked at me in the middle of it with tears in her eyes and said, you wrote this? Which was, I said, I think this film's working. Well, there's a big, you know, the, there's several twists in the story. I mean, it starts out as a lo what's known as a locked room mystery. They show up to this mental institution, and a woman has vanished from a locked room. Okay, so how did that happen? And then they go into the classic things are not as they seem part of the story. And they begin to believe that it's possible that even the disappearance was staged. And if that's the, the issue, then why are they here? And the answer to that question is the most terrifying of all. Maybe they've been brought to this island. Um, maybe they know things that they shouldn't know somewhere on the mainland. And if somebody says you're crazy and they have the authority to say that, then anything you say just proves their point. You say, no, I'm not crazy. Well, that means you're crazy. Um, and so it became very much about playing with that whole idea of either I'm paranoid or everybody really is out to get me. Teddy Daniels is a U.S. Marshal. He is working with a new partner for the first time, um, Chuck All, and they are going to Shutter Island to investigate um, the disappearance of a woman from, from a facility that is n not just a mental institution, but is a prison. And so as federal marshals, they would be the people brought in to deal with it. Um, Teddy is, is deeply tortured by the death of his wife a few years before and by his own experiences as, uh, as a soldier who liberated Dachau, which is one of the worst of the concentration camps. So he's carrying a lot of baggage onto this island anyway. And then he shows up on the island, and Shutter Island looks like it could potentially be an experimental facility. And there was a lot of strange experimentation going on in psychology in the 1950s um, involving pharma psychology, drugs, and surgery. So Teddy and Chuck are now swept up into this. What Leo brings to the role of Teddy Daniels is, is more sheer talent than you're going to see in too many actors in a single generation. I think is, is what you see. It's a, it's a performance of a lifetime. Although he's young, he'll continue to give more performances of a lifetime, but right now I think this is, this is a performance of a lifetime for him. Well, the film is, you know, yeah, we have a basic storyline that I hope is uh, extremely interesting. Uh, we have uh, arguably the world's greatest director directing it. We have a cast that is an embarrassment of riches. I mean, we're not just talking about Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Mark Ruffalo, um, Sir Ben Kingsley, Patricia Clarkson, Michelle Williams, 
Max von Sydow, the exorcist, is in this movie, for God's sakes. This is, this is pretty impressive um, on every level. I couldn't, uh, couldn't be happier with it.